Hey there Wargamers, this is Justin from Amp Services with this week's Tactical Tuesday video. Now I know it's been a little while since I uploaded a video and my excuse has unfortunately not changed. I've been busy with commissions so I've had to focus my attention there because that's what generates income and pays the bills. Um, with that being said, and before we jump into today's discussion, I'd like to encourage all of you guys out there to uh, hit that subscribe button and help make the channel grow. So without further ado, let's jump into today's discussion and uh, you know, kind of go over what I want to talk to you guys about. So it seems like probably on a daily, uh, at least weekly basis, somebody talks to me about um, their concerns with painting. You know, either they don't think they can paint, um, they're discouraged from painting, you know, they think their work's bad. Uh, and those, those are things that I've struggled with myself. So you're, you're not alone. And all I can tell you is you have to keep trying, keep practicing. And I can promise you that if you continue practicing and working on your craft, and trying to enjoy the hobby and progress while you're doing so that you will get better. So before us today I have uh, quite a few models, um, a little bit of a selection from my collection that I have painted and I'm going to take you guys through a somewhat of a chronological order uh, showing you guys where I started and where I am today and hopefully uh, give you guys the impression that you can do something similar if you put in the time and you practice and you know try to stay positive. So. One of my first models that we have here is one of my Space Marine Scouts. Now, I started playing Warmer 40K back in 2010, and this was one of my first models I painted, and I thought at the time, this looks really cool, I did a good job. I paint considerably better now. But for my first attempt, I was happy. I've got multiple colors on here, and it was good enough. I didn't base the model at the time. I was, I really, to be honest, I was making excuses. I didn't really know how to base the models, and I didn't want to, um, so I made excuses not to. Uh, now that I know how easy it is, it's not as big of a deal. Um, you can tell the decal is kind of not very good. Uh, the face is kind of meh. But for basic tabletop standard, you know, back in 2010 when I started, this this wasn't terrible for my first painted mini. Um, so it, it looks okay. Now I don't have one of my uh, initial tactical marines. Those all got sold. Um, and they got sold because these tactical marines here replaced them. I got better at painting so I wanted to replace my models. Uh, what I do have is one of my terminators. Now this came out around, or I bought this and painted it right around the same time as the scout. Um, within a couple of months probably. And uh, you can see where I got a little bit better. Um, I attempted some eyes there. I don't always dot my eyes now with the black, but there is usually a white color in there. Uh, but you can see, it's it's a little bit of improvement over the scout. It's not perfect. Uh, I didn't even I didn't try any writing on the, the parchment there. Uh, but you can see there's still mold lines on my little thunder hammer. I attempted to do a slight bit of converting. This is from a Chaos Lord you know, Terminator kit. These are uh, black Templar shoulder pads. I thought they looked cool. Uh, so just from the uh, scout sergeant to the Terminator within a couple months time there was a pretty big jump in quality. Uh, still not the best stuff I do but for someone who had been painting only a couple of months at the time I was happy and uh, again reinforcing the idea that if you practice and you keep going and, and trying and watching videos and tutorials you'll improve. So again uh, this is a couple months after the scout. Now this sergeant here was uh, probably a couple months after that um, Terminator because I replaced my tactical marines. Um, you can see the face kind of looks funky. I got some forge wood decals to look cool, but you can see in terms of progression, I, I tried doing some my or tried my hand at some writing there, some writing on the shoulder pad there, a little bit of converting so it's got a bolt gun with a scope and a combi mount. Which at the time, getting uh, combi weapons was a bit of a pain in the butt, so um, that was on there. I put some decals on the weapon. You know, I worked on some edge highlighting and, and things like that. So, you know, chronologically, the Scout Sergeant was, you know, not very good. The Terminator was a little bit better. But in terms of progression, this guy, you know, was a little bit better than the Terminator. So, always trying to progress with each new kit that I painted, I was trying to do better. Um, you know, this one, I've improved since then, as well, since this model as well. But definitely, you know, always try and look at each new kit as a learning experience. Now from the commission standpoint this is not always something I can do. Um, I don't always get to try new stuff on other people's models. Um, if I'm confident with a new technique that I have down I may try it uh, for the first like official time on uh, commission but 
generally I try and work on um, practice things on my models. That way on commission models I don't screw up. So, you know, uh, rehashing real quick. First model, second model, uh, our second unit I painted ish within a couple months of the first one. A um, few months after the sergeant or the um, Terminator, and moving on. Now, uh, these models here, these three, were from a tactical squad that was probably from 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. So, we're talking maybe a two year jump. So, this is where I was after around uh, two years of painting. The uh, I didn't do um, edge highlighting like I do now or could now on my model. So this one I think was more dry brushing. Um, but I tried to be a little bit more subtle with things. Um, you know, washes and so forth weren't quite as uh, super pronounced. Tried to um, uh, work on the basing just a little bit. You know, a little barbed wire down there trying new stuff. So this was a standard tactical marine. And as you can see, um, I have running legs and mixed bits. This was using assault marine and death watch bits across um, my unit of tacticals. So I wanted to have uh, running poses so when they ran out of the, they looked like they were running out of the tripod. So this is the sergeant for that unit. Face is still looking a little bit better than the uh, last sergeant, the uh, terminator and the scout. Still not perfect but you know reasonable. He's got uh, eyeballs, he's got teeth, he's got a little bit of a, my attempt at a five o'clock shadow, it's not terrible. Um, again, I was working on the basing, you know, decals again, you know, you can tell this is probably from a death company kit. So, in the last unit, um, at this particular time, I stumbled across Armorcast uh, cinematic effects and I was like, I want that in my army. So, I bought um, some of their muzzle flashes and rocket launcher bits, and this this is from a Tactical Marine or Devastator unit, one or the other, the old kit. So this was before GW started putting in those those rocket um, bits that uh, that come with the kits. So again, like I said, trying to always take my models and practice something new on every kit. If I if I can, I want to try a new technique um, or something new, and I thought that this guy turned out pretty well. You can see that I, I tried some edge highlighting on the, the black on the rocket here. Black areas. Um, not so much on the blue like I should have. Um, again, you live in irons. So I believe this was you know some dry brush and stuff like that, so he's not very striking. Um, you can also tell that the lenses aren't super duper amazing, but you know, again, for having only painted a couple of years, I was happy with the results. Now, it's also worth noting that um, all of these models, and the next one I'm going to show you, were done before I even learned how to do any airbrushing. So all this blue was hand painted. Uh, so the time it took me to paint these models was considerably more than it might take me to paint uh, current commission models. So keep that in mind as well. Now, I don't remember when these models came out. It was during Forge World's uh, early horse heresy stuff, but when these scouts came out, I had to have them. They looked really cool. So, uh, chronologically, I'm not sure how long after that last tactical squad I painted these, but um, it wasn't too terribly long. So, they look very similar to the scouts, or not scouts, um, the tactical marine. You can see I tried my hand in a little bit of edge highlighting. Um, same thing on the brown. The green edges were very, very harsh. Um, I would probably try to do something a little bit more subtle today if I was to do these again. Um, you can see on the lens, I tried to do a little bit more of a... Um, uh, a highlight or whatever to sell the effect of the lens there. Um, so, again, uh, reiterating, and I know it probably sound like a broken record here, but trying new stuff. So, when you guys get into 40K and you're buying your kits, every time you paint one, try some new technique. If there's a new, or if there's something you want to learn to do, try it. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is you fail, uh, but failing is is better. It's a little bit better to look at failure as not just failure, but as a learning experience. If you don't get a technique right, you learn something. You know, you just got to keep trying. And once you nail it, it's you got it. You know, um, I can't uh, express enough how useful um, YouTube tutorials and stuff like that are, and also for motivation. So um, there are a couple of artists that I really like, and uh, we're gonna use this as a little bit of a plug. Not that these artists need this. Um, but I like watching uh, Hugo from, oh man, I 
I can't remember what his YouTube channel is, but Hugo, Golden Demon winner. Uh, I like watching um, but the guy from Buy Painted. Uh, I believe he is also outside of the United States, but I like accents, so when you listen to that guy teach you to paint, um, he's got a pleasant voice to listen to. And finally, my all-time favorite artist uh, to watch paint and attempt to pull techniques from is Lester Bursley from Awesome Paint Job. Uh, that guy's really awesome, and to be honest with you, he was probably the uh, one of the biggest motivators that I've had for trying to get better. Every time I saw something of his, I was like, why can't I do that? I want to learn to do that. So he's still, in my opinion, leagues better than I am, but uh, he gave me motivation to to try and practice. So um, I haven't watched a huge number of tutorials, but I've tried to pick up some techniques, uh, one of which was painting flesh. I learned a little bit from him from that, but um, mostly it's just watching him's motivated me to try and get better. Um, I would try and look at uh, painting from the personal perspective and not necessarily trying to be a competition. Um, there will always be someone who's better than me or worse than me and it's like that in everything in life. Uh, so I you know, have my favorite artists that I gravitate towards and I watch them, they motivate me to paint. Even if I'm not as good as them, you know, it's still nice to try and, um, you know, I don't want to say replicate, but aspire to be what they are like. <laughs> the heroes of painting, so to speak. So, anyway, moving on. Um, this guy, uh, if, if these models were right around 2012, um, 20 early, yeah, 2012, maybe early 2013, somewhere in there. Um, I know I got this guy like the month that Forge World released him. So if one of you guys knows when the um, Power Armor Scouts came out from Forge World, that's when he was painted. So I don't remember. <laughs> now these guys uh, were painted in um, 2014 for Adepticon. Uh, many of you may or may not know, but I paint not only for myself, but also paint for Brush for Hire, which is now um, mostly known as Death Ray Designs. And in 2014, I sent a unit of Death Watch uh, to Adepticon with, uh, at the time, Brush for Hire. And I sent uh, 10 Tactical Marines um, to look like Death Watch. I, at the time, I was using a Stern Guard. Um, an Inquisitor, a Razorback, and a Derodero Dreadnought. Uh, matter of fact, quick slide intermission, intermission here. I will show you the Derodero. Uh, I guess I could show you him in just a second too. So let's, uh, let's just pop him down here. All right, now back on this. So, um, you know, probably a year, a little over a year after that scout, um, I painted this. Now, the caveat is I have painted a lot of models. Um, on commission so I've gotten a lot more practice and a lot more uh, stuff in but um, in the scheme of things because I've painted so much and continued on and had the again the luxury of painting a lot of models I've been able to progress so you can see that face looks considerably better than the other faces that I had done um, there's a lot more edge highlighting on here the basing now this is a Dragonforge base but um, the basing looks a lot better you can see a power weapon um, you know, decal stuff like that so I was actually, um, this is, this, I airbrushed on this and then went and hand detailed, so um, the paint looks a little bit um, cleaner, you know, I don't see brush strokes and things like that, so um, you're looking at, you know, in terms of comparison, you know, that to that. Now the Scout doesn't look bad, but in my opinion, the Death Watch guy looks a lot better. I also mixed a lot of bits, so this is a, um, I think that's from Ravenwing or Biker. Uh, storm or uh, bulk gun that I, I mounted on his back because I mean, he was stern guard. They kind of had all kinds of cool stuff, and that is a uh, Forge World pre heresy style backpack. So, and uh, this, this guy was painted at the same time, but this is the Derodero. He's he's a little bit dusty. A um, lot of uh, airbrush work again. Dragon Forge base that I painted up. Uh, working on a little bit of freehand on the laurels here. Um, this little gnat bugging the crap out of me. Um, you can see the little lens up here I worked on. Now, the the light's giving it a little bit of a glare that normally wouldn't be there. Um, but there's a gloss coat on it, things like that. So, uh, all about, again, progression and, and learning. So, now, I can't remember when these assassins came out. I think these came out in 2015. Um, so, just more progression. I was a big fan of the Vindicare back in the day when he was in the Demon Hunters book. For all you 40k guys out there, that was a long time ago. Um, the old models looked really cool. When the new ones came out, I lost my freaking mind. Um, 
a friend of mine who I have also done quite a bit of commission work for, um, basically at the time was like, I will trade you uh, all four assassins if you paint a model for me. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll take that deal. Because at the time, these weren't in blisters. So I got all four, which again, at the time, uh, the scalpers on eBay were charging some insane prices for these. Um, so it was a reasonably good deal for the model to paint for him, but this guy turned out super well. So having worked on the Death Watch models and then getting to work on some black suits again, I got to practice a little bit more with my edge highlighting. Um, and black's a different beast. Um, got to work a little bit on trying, you know, golds, and this is one of the first times I ever tried any kind of gooey basing to this degree. So I was trying to go with some like toxic sludge or toxic something. I imagine like these guys were fighting in some like demon infested world or maybe against Tyranids, something crazy. So, you know, again, keeping up with the chronological order here and comparisons, um, you can see this guy's basing. We aren't going to show that scout sergeant again, but you know, this guy's basing versus this guy's basing. So I'm trying different things and progressing. And there's a huge difference in quality here. Now, from that same batch, I also painted this assassin who was my second favorite. The Vindicare is my first favorite, not necessarily because he looks super, super cool, but he's got a sniper rifle, so special place in my heart. And this guy's probably the one that turned out the best. Um, I was trying, again, edge highlighting, cool basing, and I was trying like wet blending and stuff on his uh, skull, and it came out super clean. I was trying, you know, getting those lenses to make those look cool. You know, I was trying to make it look like his gun had like some type of weird poison in the syringe there. This thing will focus. There we go. Um, you know, trying some tubing. Um, tried my hand on the base to make it look like somebody uh, had a bloody handprint and was drug into the sludge. So, lots of little extra details, things that you may or may not pick up on in a game, but always trying. When I got these and went to paint them, I was like, I'm going to try my hand at making these look cool and try and um, progress and get better. You can also see that the barrel was drilled. You, know, you can actually see through it, so lots of little things. Now, fast forward to... 2016, um, what are we, September now, and I have finished, for the first time in a while, some personal models for myself, and I have finished some uh, Tactical Marines. Now, it had been quite a while since I got to play any Warhammer, uh, and when I did play Warhammer for about a year, I was on a losing streak, I just kept losing, um, I had not updated my models, and I was getting frustrated. Um, things in the game went certain directions I wasn't super happy with. My army was built for 5th edition. So, uh, a few months back, one of the guys at the local shop suggested, you know, outfitting my army with grav and updating some models, which is what I did. And I got finally got some finished scouts, or not scouts, uh, tactical marines. And um, basically, it, in the evenings after I was done painting, I spent probably two to three hours a night um, working on these tactical marines. They were very slow, but it's I spent about 60 maybe 60 plus hours on 20 Marines, which is obscene. If you roll ones and twos, they still die. But again, trying to practice new techniques or just hone the craft, you know. So um, here is one of the Grav Cannons. So by comparison, you can see the lenses look pretty decent. Um, edge highlighting. So on this side, it's a light blue. On this side, it's a little bit more of a lighter blue, um, particularly on the helmet, you can see the difference. So. My idea here was maybe the light was hitting from this angle, you know. Uh, so I tried to make my edge highlighting reflect that. Tried to, um, I've been working on object source lighting, OSL. Uh, so in this particular model, I was trying to do the green on the grab and I tried to tone it down. Um, in the past, I've gotten a little bit crazy and my models have been blown out. Um, the OSL was a little bit too crazy. So from across the table, it looked cool, but when you picked them up, it was too much. So I tried to tone that down and um, kind of make it look better pretty you know my ping looks pretty decent um, you know again trying to, to work on the basing so I've got two different types of grass the rocks I've got uh, that same type of barbed wire and it might not be as noticeable in on the camera here but there's a little bit of uh, you can see on his foot for example um, a little bit of discoloration is to look like dust or dirt up on his feet so working with pigments um, working on that tubing trying to make it look good hazard stripes uh, so that is one of the grav cannons, and this is kind of a culmination of all the things I've worked on so far and practiced and learned. Uh, we're at to put on one model. Now you can see this is one of my sergeants. Um, 
My 20 Tactical Marines have a mix of several different kits. There's a Devastator kit mixed in, there is an Assault Marine kit mixed in, and then the Tactical Squad. So you'll see from the Assault Squad, he's got part of the basing from that. You can see his feet have a little bit of a, a dirt dust look to him. It's not super striking, it's just real subtle. I was going for a subtle look. You know, I've got the, the real bright blue highlight on that one side. Well, you know, lighter blue on this side. Same thing across the model. Um, green lenses. Tried to work on the face, make him look cool. He doesn't have black dot, dotted eyes. Um, I could probably do that, but I didn't want to screw it up. It's just one of those things like from across the table looks cool up close, looks kind of weird, but it's just where I'm at right now. Um, so it turned out pretty well, you know. So when you're comparing them, going back here, see so if you're looking at those two faces, that's night and day. Now, granted, uh, this is 2010, this is 2016, that's six years of experience. But, you know, if this is where you want to be and this is what you aspire to be, you can do it. Now, finally, one of the sergeants from the squad uh, is here. And now you can notice um, I like to go with cool posing. I always try and mix and max, match bits. So this is one of the Devastator uh, legs, the kneeling. He, this is from Squad 2, which for me is my Omega Squad. I have Alpha and Omega. That's Squad 1 and 2 for me. Um, the server, Servo Skull here serves no purpose, just looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, you can see I tried, it might not focus super well. Worked on the lenses there. Decal, you can see he's meant to be a veteran sergeant, so he's got like the laurels on his helmet. He's got the parchment on his back and it's not easy to see, but there's, you know, there you go. It's meant to look like there's a little bit of writing on there. Uh, the banner, I tried a lot of blending things. It's a little bit dark in areas, more so than I might have liked, but I really worked it, maybe a little bit too much, but I kept trying. I was trying some inks and stuff like that. Um, cool looking shoulder, uh, a combi grab, so try to keep that glow down. And then his face, if we can focus in on it might not because of that sword. There we go. Eh, sort of. Well, I don't know if it's going to focus on it. Um, it doesn't look terrible. It looks pretty good. Same thing, again, with the rest of the models. Working on the edge highlighting and stuff like that. So, I'll grab one more. This guy might be a little bit easier to see. Um, I'm not as sold on this face. This is a sergeant from Omega Squad. So you can see a different face. Um, tried writing. The, the death writing on his chest didn't come out as well as I wanted. Um, you know, the, so, uh, he's alpha, from Alpha Squad. Um, shoulder supposed to say Ultra. A little bit hard to see. Get the power sword. Lightning effects. That's something I've been continuously trying to practice. Um, he has Devastator legs as well to make him look cool. Also got the uh, veteran red, red helmeted sergeant there with the laurels on it. And you know, the little golden skull decal. So, um, anyways, guys, the, the point of this video, it was not like I'm not trying to showcase models. And if you made it this far, awesome. Hopefully you got some cool comments to share with me about uh, your experiences. But the whole point of this video is for me to show you guys that, um, for lack of better terms, I'm human. Um, I started here and I've ended here um, with these models and these over here looking better than the stuff in the front. But... Uh, for you guys who are new to the hobby, you you may start somewhere here unless you're just super gifted, which is awesome. If you start, you know, off by doing just really just super awesome work, kudos to you. <laughs> it took me a while to get to get where I'm at, but the point is, um, don't discourage yourself. Don't feel disparaged. Um, if you deal with uh, local players or people online that um, harass you or uh, down your work, distance yourself from them. Those aren't the people you want to be around. You want people that are going to try and help uh, encourage you and, and build you up. So um, always trying to find the positives. Um, every project you work on, try and find some cool technique you've worked on and progress and learn. And uh, I promise you, over time, you know, once you've been in the hobby for a few years, you'll look back and you'll look at your models and you'll go, man, my stuff looks way better than it used to. And then one day you may have a video like I do or some photos showcasing your first model or one of your first models and one of your most recent ones. And with that, we'll close and do a quick... You know, comparison again. On the left here is my old model, on the right is my most recent one. So you can see, very different, a lot more experience, and this looks better. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, 
let me know what your experiences are like. Uh, how is your first model uh, look compared to what it is now? Are you a new player? Does this help encourage you to paint? Let me know. Let's get a discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for next time. Hopefully we have some cool videos here soon. As always, guys, happy wargaming.